There was a mill here in 1840. It was known as the John Downs Mill. And then it burned, and my great-granddaddy, Lucius Pinckney Fielder, built this building in 1930. And his son, Edlo Hart Fielder. This is the gate where we release the water into the mill. The mill has a water turbine. But I'm going to raise the gate here and let you see how we do. And uh, it drinks up a lot of water. As the water comes through the, the tunnel under the dam, under the mill, it goes into what we call the well. The pressure and the water has to go through a turbine, which is like a windmill on its side has paddles and as it turns that water is rushing through that turbine it makes it spin and it produces about 25 horsepower This cleaner was built in probably 1948 because that's when we got electricity. And my granddaddy was a, a somewhat talented at building things. So he took some pieces and parts and built, built this cleaner. It's a revolving screen with a blacksmith blower down here that blows air through the grain as it falls and it blows out the lightweight trash and the corn uh, works its way down to this elevator with the little belt with the cups on it that takes it upstairs and puts it on a pipe which conveys it over to the millstone. Once we get over here then we can release the corn through this uh, little gate right here and let it into the hopper and uh, this corn is very clean, but a lot of times people who bring corn, we have to stand here and pick the cookaburs and the trash out, but, and we can let it out as we need it. stone weighs about a ton and it does the grinding. The bottom stone is, is much lighter and thinner and it's stationary but the shaft comes up through the center and, and it engages that top stone which turns and as it turns the centrifugal force feeds the grain between the stones and as it gets closer and closer to the edge of the stone it's ground into meal or grits. These stones I know have been here 90 years and they're not worn out. And there's a full wheel around there that you can actually raise that top stone if you want to make it coarser, which is grits. It's just coarser cornmeal. And so you raise the rock to make grits or let it down to make flour. I was 14 years old and I started running the mill and I had to hire a man to do my delivery because we had a had a meal route back then had 16 stores but when I got 16 I fired him because I could do it by myself you know, and cut him out and I be, I ran the mill and I've been doing it now 55 years and we don't have any grocery stores anymore they've all closed mm, all of those old country stores are gone that's I still have a mail order business somewhat, and people still come pick it up occasionally. And we run the mill two or three times a week.
kind of strong. They cause no bitterness or very little bitterness. What I'm doing is I'm making hoe cake. It's made out of cornmeal water and salt. You kind of get it to a sort of soupy consistency. Then on an iron skillet, you cook it in canola oil. It's very hot. And the cornmeal came out of this mill? It did. That's not an issue. But we get it fired up with the wood first and uh, then we go for the coal. used to grind the cane when we first started doing it on a mule drawn uh, cane mill and you see the sweet pole would go around and around and the mule would walk around and around and grind it and then he had the, tr the mule uh, got old and the man with the mule got old and couldn't come anymore so he started using his uh, tractor driven cane mill. It's a three roller mill where you put the cane in and grinds the juice and catch it in the foot tub and we tote it down to his syrup kettle and we pour it in. We'll, we'll grind eight or 10 buckets, whatever it takes to make 80 gallons in, in his kettle. And we'll uh, bring it down here and pour it in and start a little fire when it gets close to full, start warming it up slowly. And as we warm it up, we'll skim it before it starts to boiling. Once it starts to rolling over, all the impurities kind of roll down into it and it's hard to get them out. So we try to skim it real good before it starts to rolling and get all that cleaned up and then they just sit there and watch it cook uh, four to six hours while you boiling the water out. You just keep cooking it and the water evaporates and when enough of the water is gone that it's the right uh, viscosity, I guess you'd call it, the thickness, then, then the syrup is ready to come up. Can you explain the value of the skimmings or the historical value of the skimmings? Uh, they say that people would feed them to their hogs sometime and uh, some people would say that they would wait for a couple of weeks and they'd get a straw and stick down in there and drink what was on the bottom themselves. I've never tried that. Mm -hmm. I don't think I want to, but they say it has a pretty powerful kick. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've heard as well. <laughs> Uh, and I guess you could probably take it and, and tend to it real carefully and work it off and get a product that might look presentable. Mm -hmm. But the hogs wasn't too concerned about that if you fed it to them.
I remember back in the 70s, we had some real dry years, and we also had a lot of farmers coming to the mill. I'd maybe have 25 or 30 people backed up here waiting to grind, and we would run out of water. Mm -hmm. And it might take two or three days for it to build back up, but we don't have that problem now because we don't have the farmers. We right. don't have the people coming to the mill. Still good, the memory is better still. 